Hey everyone, before I start my video, I just want to say here in Ottawa, we've been locked down now for three weeks. If you're feeling irritable, discontent, bored, and maybe like me, feel like a real lazy ass, you're not alone. Because let me tell you something, this isolation and physically distancing thing that we have to do here in Ottawa, we must do it, is trying, it's starting to get to me a little bit. You know, I go to work, there's not a lot of work out there, so I go, I'm pretty bored, we're just sitting around. I come home, you know, I'm doing my meetings on the couch now through Zoom, which I'm very grateful for. Watching Netflix, doing all that kind of stuff I, I, I should be doing to maintain my recovery, but I'm feeling bored and I'm feeling lazy. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna exercise a little more. I'm gonna get out there and participate more in meetings on Zoom and call more people up. And most of what I'm gonna do is I'm not going to drink, and that's for sure. This may be hard for you, it may be difficult for me or hard for me too, but it's no reason to drink. It's not an excuse to drink. This will pass. It may take another month or two or maybe even three, but it will pass and things will return back to normal. And in the meantime, work your program, reach out and don't drink. It's not a reason to drink people. It's not a reason to drink, okay? But that's not what this video is about. This video is about why I stopped drinking and some benefits that you will get if you stop drinking, just like me, that I, I received when I stopped drinking. One of the three of the main reasons I quit drinking, the first one was my mind. I was going mental. I was paranoid. I couldn't stop my mind. My mind would quit race, keep racing. I was full of worry. I was full of fear. I thought I was going crazy. I just couldn't stop my mind. It was just going whoa, whoa, all the time. The only thing that could stop it was a drink. So at the end of my drinking, the, one of the main reasons I stopped drinking is because I was totally paranoid. I thought I was going crazy. The second reason I stopped drinking, what came to light when I, towards the end of my drinking, was my relationships. I treated my mother bad. I, my work relationships were awful. I couldn't, I wasn't, you know, I was unemployable. My, my girlfriend's, my relationship with my girlfriend wasn't that great. With my kids, with my brothers, my sisters, my friends, whoever it was, I had horrible relationships with people. I don't say all my relationships were bad. You know, the people I drank with, I had great relationships with, but just everyday relationships with people was horrible. So my personal relationships, uh, towards the end of my drinking, or maybe a few years before I quit drinking, were on a downward slide to the garbage can, or it was going horrible, and I started to realize what I was doing to people around me. The third thing that really got to me, and you know, pushed me into quitting drinking, thinking about recovery, was my health. I was having major, major heart palpitations. I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. I was having huge stomach issues. You know, I put some videos up above here you can link to, but I've had, I was having huge stomach issues. You know, I thought I had cancer. I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. I was, you know, I was 155 pounds when I came into recovery. I'm 210 now. I've been in it for over 20 years now, but just to let you know, I was a beanpole. I was really skinny, not eating properly. I had huge health issues. So they're the three main reasons that I came in to recovery. But you know something? I've had terrific results about be, uh, being silver. I've had a lot of great benefits being silver. Some came fast. Some had to be worked on over a number of years, but I did accumulate a, a life with a lot of benefits of being sober. One of the benefits I, I received pretty quick was financial benefit. Because I wasn't drinking all my money away in the bar, my finances started to improve. I could pay my rent, pay my cell phone. I could do things like that that were you know, be easy for someone else, but somebody in my position, be an alcoholic, I couldn't pay for a bubble gum. All my money went to booze. I could live up to my responsibilities financially when I quit drinking. Do you know what an alcoholic car looks like? Oh, well, I tell you what it looks like. Bumper hanging off, not bumper, my muffler was hanging off. You know, the doors were squeaky. The, the car rough, ran rough, never had an oil change. Tires were a little bald. And if I had an up-to-date plate, that was a bonus. And insurance, well, I never really drove with insurance too often. So my car was 
safer to drive once I quit drinking. So that's one thing that I really benefit because I love to have a car. I always liked having an automobile when I was drinking. And when I, when I stop drinking, I want to have a car to get around to meetings and get around to recovery stuff. It was much easier having an automobile and have a reliable automobile was, was bonus, was bonus. Another thing was my relationships that happened. I started to have great relationships with my mother, with my brothers and my sisters. I remember my sister telling me, Terry, you are the best you've ever been in your whole life. I came into recovery in my late 20s, early 30s, and I was a mess. I was a mess, people. And for my sister to tell me that, that was, it brought so much joy to my life in that very moment. Because, you know, we go into recovery, we're so hard on ourselves in early recovery, we can't see what the good in us. And we often, we often ignore it or, or don't pay attention to the good stuff. But sometimes we get a glimmer of hope or something good that somebody says to us and we listen to it and we believe it. And I believe that from my sister when she told me that. You know, my sister wasn't provoked to say it, she just said it to me. And I thought that was fantastic. Another thing that happened to me was my ability to hold a job. I was able to hold a job for more than 30 days or a couple of weeks without freaking out, running off. They weren't great jobs at the start, you know, minimum wage jobs, but I stayed. My first job in recovery was about a year long. I stayed there for 12 months. It was in a restaurant because I was a chef when I drank. And I stayed in the restaurant job for 12 months. So I became more reliable. My, my behavior was more predictable when it came to my employer too. So that was a terrific thing that happened to me. I started being able to look after myself physically. Started to eat properly, do a little bit of exercise, quit cigarettes, I started to look after myself and pay attention to myself physically, get my teeth fixed, do things like that that I neglected for a number of years. You know, there's so much benefit when we get sober. There is so much that happens to us, but we need to be aware of it. We need to be aware of what is, why is, why are we getting sober and what are we getting out of this? Because if we're not getting anything out of it, it's really hard for us to stay sober. It's like going to work, working 40 hours a week and not getting a paycheck. Another thing that happened to me is my relationship with my children improved. It proved dramatically. I was able to pick, well, I was separated at this time, but as I was able to pick my children up, take them to the park and act like a normal father would do. You know, the booze took so much away from me. I was a self-centered, crazy eagle maniac when I was drunk and when I was sober. I was out of control. I'd scare my children. I'd scare my ex-wife. I'd do things that I would not normally do if I was sober in a recovery program. So my relationship with my children improved. Another thing, I was able to go back to school and do some night courses. I'm illiterate. I can't really read and write that great even to this day, but Thanks to you know the computer and Word and all that kind of stuff, I'm able to do things that I never thought I'd be able to do. I went back to school. I got a few courses at night. It's really great to do. You know, I was taking simple courses at the start, but I've always been a person of interest. I like doing interesting things and taking new things on. So I took some night courses and that started to build my confidence up too. And, and I thought that was terrific to do. So that's a great big bonus. Another benefit of recovery that I received was I was able to start problem solving for my own life, taking responsibility for my life, make decisions for myself that were good or bad, but be out there taking responsibility for my life on a daily basis. When I drank, I didn't deal with anything. I was very immature. I was very irresponsible. I didn't really make any decisions for myself that were good or bad. I relied on other people to tell me what to do. But when I got sober, it was a, it was really a freedom at the max to be able to make my own decisions and my own choices for myself and to problem solve when I had a difficulty with the help of other people, but I problem solved. So over time, I become more mature, more responsible for my life and more able to figure out what's good for Terry G and what's not good for Terry G. And that was a huge benefit when it came to recovery. It was a huge benefit. But the number one benefit 
that I received in recovery up to this day is that I have become a better person and a better person in every aspect in my relationships my work life my spiritual life my relationship with myself my relationship with pre people places and things and I feel pretty damn good about life on a daily basis most days recovery has so many benefits some benefits will come slow some will come fast but you will get the benefit it's like going to work and getting paid if you were in recovery and you weren't getting any rewards or any benefits from your recovery program you would more likely quit I don't know about you but I would more likely quit but you do get benefits and the number one benefit that you get is that you're sober and you have the opportunity to change your life and because you change your life the lives of the people around you the places around you will change to the better believe it or not they say if one person one alcoholic gets sober 40 people's lives change to the better i don't know if that's true i've never really done this study but i've heard that in program meetings before okay thanks a lot for stopping by this is an alcohol free life channel my name is terry g and as usual look after yourself because it shows don't forget to subscribe don't forget to leave a comment and this pandemic will end and you know something we'll just get on with our recovery and we'll learn from it and we'll share it to our grandchildren we'll share this for 100 years to come god bless everybody my heart goes out stay safe stay connected don't drink go to meetings and let me tell you something you can stay sober through this and you will still sober so stay sober blah 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 just tripped over my tongue Thanks for stopping by. See you next time.